viewers, in the last video, we built up a new wiring loom for the Honda. With that fitted, the next step was to sort out the wheels. They're pretty badly buckled. In fact, the back wheel even has a spoke missing, a nice big chunk out of the hub where the spoke's been torn out. So first step was to get the wheels off the bike, then we get the tyres off the wheels, then we can start looking at getting the old spokes, what's left of them, off the wheel, dismantle it all, and then keep an eye on the pattern of the spokes so we can rebuild it again properly with a brand new hub. So if we start with this one here, this one goes to the outside of the hub on this side. The next one along here where my finger is, goes to the outside of the hub on the other side. Then the next one, so that's not one, Two, and then number three here goes to the inside on the sort of the, the near side of the hub to me and then number four goes to the inside of the far side of the hub so outside outside inside 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 outside inside outside, inside, outside, inside, outside. and that's the pattern that goes all the way around so as long as I know that's the pattern I should be able to rebuild the wheel as it is pretty much I then took the wheel apart at four times the speed of light, but I've slowed the footage down so you can see it properly. With a lot of help from my dad and his fantastic wheel truing stand, we then got to work. Well, the underneath ones go to the left. To so the left, and so no matter what, that's that one. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so that looks right for there. Yeah. Can I put this on just yeah. gently enough just to hold it, I suppose? Just to, yeah, just to give us a little bit of. Um, so. This one here, blob. And do we do both sides at the same time, or do we do all of the top and then all of the bottom? I'm just thinking from when we did it that that some some were okay, and, and others you end up getting knotted like that one. They all go. They left. all go. They all go to the left. First thing was to build the wheel up. After that, we could then look at truing it up so there's no buckles or kinks. Right. Well, not quite true, but no. <laughs> Doesn't matter, it's together anyway. With the wheel built and on the truing stand, the next step was to tighten and loosen spokes on opposite sides of the wheel to remove any up and down or left to right motion. One part of the rear rim was particularly buckled. I reckon at some point in its life it's just hit a really big rock or something. It's between there and there. It's the worst bit. And that's kicking across that way. Yeah. Right. So what I've had to do to counteract that is to loosen that side spokes. But you sort of and how many times up one side to the same amount the other. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then of course you've also got the up and down. Yeah. Which is a couple of millimeters. And you you're pro to be honest, you're probably fine they're not that good on a on a new one. Yeah. You know what I mean? But nevertheless it's a bit out. What isn't good though is that wheel. Front wheel. <sighs> they, they were loose. I I, I I'd knit them up slightly because they were rattling, yeah. but they were yeah. really, really loose. Well, that wheel, it's... Mm. And I don't know if I can pull that back. Ah. Uh, but you're talking of a bike here that's doing 30 miles an hour. You're yeah. not talking of a 90 mile an hour exactly, motorway yeah. cruiser, are you? No, no. You know, you're know, you not going to get shakes like this at 30 miles an hour just because the wheel, but wheels are a little bit No. Out. Right, let's put that on. Okay, and just... Wow. You yeah. see that's out, can't you? But that said, just hold put your finger on there and it's fairly smooth, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it is actually. And that's the original Honda bearings in there. It's almost like a slightly buckled wheel. Yeah, it is. I reckon it hit something at some point. I can't see any obvious dent in it. No. I can see that oh, no, actually if you look at that bit there, it looks like it's doing a bit of this. Yeah, just the, oh, yeah. that bit there, you can see the whole rim does that actually. We used a whiteboard marker to mark the points on the rim where it moves the most sideways. This is the point there where we can start tightening the spokes on one side, loosening them on the other, and that just pulls the rim across, hopefully without introducing too much up and down movement. And then tighten up the ones by the side. One. Just took 
got that kick in it, hasn't it? It's a slow process that requires quite a bit of patience, but it is quite therapeutic. As we noted earlier, it's a bike that's going to do 30 miles an hour and not a lot more, and it's 54 years old. So really we're not going for perfect rims here, we're just looking for an element of good enough. How's it looking? Slightly worse I think. Yeah, I think it's got a slow wave rather than a... Once the rim looks pretty straight, we want to make sure the spokes are relatively tight, which we can do with a screwdriver and just see if we can play a little bit of a tune. Sounds coming out of that. Yeah. After a bit more tuning of the spokes, things were looking good, so the men at work decided it was time for a beer and we called it a day. With the wheels trued up, the next step was to replace the brake shoes so that we can stop, and then we can put the wheels back on the bike. Oof. Oh, pads. oh, new springs. Oh, beautiful. Happy. Finally, I was ready to fit my spider infested tyres onto the rims, and for this, I don't really want to use tyre levers. Tyre levers are great for getting the tyre off, but to get the tyre back on again, you run the risk of pinching the inner tube. So what I use instead is this hand cleaner type gel, I assure you it's that, it's not some kind of lubricant for other purposes. With the help of the Ann Summers hand cleanser, I got the first half of the tyre on, the next step was to get the inner tube in, in such a way that we're not going to pinch it and cause any kind of puncture. I can flip the inner tube just a little bit, make sure it A, doesn't, you know, immediately go down, it does hold a bit of air. B, I can just line things up, get things ready, let a bit out and get it inside the tyre. But if it's got a little bit of air in, it might just be a bit less likely to pinch, because if it pinches it, then we've had it. So uh, let's get this in. Right, for now, let's get the rest of this tube in. Definitely don't want to start pinching any bits of the tube between the bead of the tire and the rim. That's when you start catching things and things go badly wrong. So now we're going to get the rest of the bead on, and this is where it gets even with the lubricant applied. It's going to be a bit fiddly, a bit tricky to get the uh, rest of the tire on. So once you've got a critical amount on, it'll hold there, it'll stay. And then it gets harder and harder until the point where it actually then starts to get easier and easier and eventually should just pop on nicely. You just got to work a little bit by a little bit. Come on. Ah. The point there where it really does get difficult so I apply a bit more of this. Uh, what I promise you is some uh, cleaning stuff for the garage. Oh, here we go. Yes. Yes. Ha ha ha. Gotcha. Bloody hell. Oh, that was tough. Woo. Mounting the wheels back onto the bike, I thought this is going great until I realised the links on the forks are quite heavily bent, like it's been run into a tree or something. So I need to straighten the suspension out, but for now I'm going to leave it there. I'll follow that up in another video. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.